The National Points Championship for Brisker Formula One stock cars may be over for 2017, but there's still one night of racing to go. And a brilliant field of over 70 drivers have gathered at Birmingham Wheels Raceway for the annual end of season gala night. Drivers from past, present and future in Brisker Formula One have gathered here in the second city for what should be a brilliant night with farewell races, championship races and a very special event indeed, the Dave Leonard Under 25 Championship topping the programme. A legend of Brisker F1 celebrates his retirement here tonight as well as number 73 Rob Cowley calls time on a 40-year career around the UK's raceways. Some stars of the past will be out to celebrate with him here at Birmingham. A special race being held, second race on the programme after the Dave Leonard and the 25s, and two heats, a consolation, a dash for cash for the F2s, and the gala night final for Brisker F1s. Meantime, we caught up with the man of the moment. 73, Rob Cowley. We spoke at the beginning of the season about this being your retirement year. That day's now come, the last meeting. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, come quicker than I thought it would. Uh, time flies as you get older, you know. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm, I've just said to somebody else, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for retirement now. Uh, I've done 40 years and uh, I, you know, the, the bones start to ache a little bit more. And uh, you know, the, the hits, they're not any harder, but they just feel a bit harder. So yeah, but uh, so many nice memories. And of course, they're having a testimonial race for you tonight, which is a nice touch. There's a lot of drivers come back out for that. Yeah, that was, I was really surprised at that one. Um, I didn't expect any of this. I just thought I was gonna come along and I was gonna have a, have a meeting and that was it. But as you can see, they've done the back of the bus up, they've done the car up for me, they've, you know, they're really going to town, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, shocked, to be honest with you. Well, enjoy your night, it's your last night. Any revenge hits that you need to get on anybody, you've got to do it now. Yep. That's right, I've just told uh, Paul Hines, I ain't forgot, I still owe you from Ipswich. <laughs> well, have fun and enjoy. Thank you ever so much indeed, thank you. Time for our first race of the night then, the Dave Leonard under 25 championship. This uh, race created by Dave Leonard, a longtime stock car sponsor and former F2 racer. A few years ago, he passed away last year, sadly, and the race now run in his memory. It's a two-part grid for this race. There are 30 cars out there. The front half of the grid, consisting of drivers who've contested three or more Brisker F1 meetings this year, while those drivers who haven't, and we have got a number of novices out there tonight in this one, some making their Brisker F1 debuts, they start at the back. 408 and Bort Neils won this race last year. He's in among the blue graders there. Star names from the back, including Lee Fairhurst, Ben Riley, a Birmingham specialist, Frankie JJ, Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. in treble five as well, among this fantastic field of 30 Brisker Formula One stock cars. Away we go then, racing over 20 laps. Dave Leonard, this one's for you. 127, Austin Moore, it is who leads them away. 101, Tristan Jackson trying to get through into second place there on the first lap. He's a Birmingham specialist as well. A bit of locking up there. Jacqueline Ellis in 219 and wallop straight in. She goes on to oh, we've lost somebody else down there as well. A couple of the yellow tops. I think uh, Aaron Leach is one of them in number 70. He would have been one of the favourites for this race as well, given his form around Birmingham this year. Danny Waitman's out there as well in 212. There's Lee Fairhurst making early progress. The 186 car there. That's uh, Harry Stewart at the wheel of that car. But the caution flags are out, I think, for Jacqueline Ellis down on turn four. See what happened again there, the uh, battle just behind the leaders. Several cars got sent out wide, and it was Ellis who took the big impact there, tangling with Richard Woods in 268, and Leach involved there as well. Jacqueline Ellis uh, out of the race, and was shaken up, one of four lady drivers competing here this evening. Austin Moore, number 127, leads the way then ahead of Tristan Jackson and Alex Wass in 283 as we get back underway towards turn one, Ashley England just behind the leaders there, driving one of the Wayman team's cars. His Dutchman, Sjern de Vries, being lapped in H54. 127, who leads the way, Austin Moore. Phoebe Wayman gets spun aside into the wall in 2-1-1. A mixed race for the Waitmans so far. 2-8-3, Alex Wass up the inside, he takes the lead. Coming through turn one and two as Sjern de Vries gets uh, sent out wide. With 30 drivers all under the age of 25, really does show what a strong future Brisker F1 does have as George Elwell spins, gets clobbered by a couple of cars, and that's claimed Ben Riley, so one of the race favourites involved there in 4-2-2. Two, two. 
plenty of action all the way down the order. Alex Wass leads Ashley England, Austin Moore third, Michael Stewart in 5-1-2 is fourth, but I think he's just been taken by Lee Fairhurst. Yes, there's Stewart now behind Antwort Neils as well. Fairhurst flying through the field up into fourth place already behind our uh, yellow grade group at the front. Michael Stewart sends Antwort Neils into a parked car, that's of Martin Spires who spun there on turn four. Somebody else spun out there, Jay Hewitt in 5-4-6. Carl Hawkins in 175 under fire from Danny Wayman. 283, Alex Wass leads the way. We saw him take a win at Northampton on our coverage earlier this season. The uh, car of Tim Warwick is flashing through there, driven tonight by 387 Hannah Chattel, the uh, wingless uh, somewhat vintage car. Lee Fairhurst has done the fastest lap of the race. He's caught Ashley England. He could be one of the favourites here. It would be very fitting if Lee was to uh, take the title because he was sponsored by. Dave Leonard for a number of years of his very successful brisket F1 career. Fairhurst family, great friends of the Leonards. It's past Ashley England now. In behind them, Ryan Jones in number 72, making his brisket F1 debut here tonight at Sir Birmingham. The Rebels and a currently stops car racer. It's Alex Wass who leads. Fairhurst now second, England third in this Dave Leonard of the 25 Championship. The Union flag is out for halfway. Russ comes up to lap Tom Boyer in 28, making his first appearance of the season. Back in the order, Danny Wayman, Will Hunter in 2.20. Ben Riley recovering in 4.22, got into a pile-up earlier on. Also in there is Courtney Wits in 1.80. Her first appearance this year, the former National Mini Stocks gold top. All four of our lady drivers out in this one, although Phoebe Wayman didn't get too far before she got spun into the wall in 2.11. Was ahead of Lee Fairhurst. This is the battle for third place. Ashley England in the Wayman car, 346. There's Danny Wayman in 212. Won this event two years ago in the 25 championship. Chasing Michael Stewart. 5-1-2 behind them, and Ward Neal's the reigning champion, but Lee Fairhurst limbering up for an attack now on Alex Wass as we go into turn three, in goes the bumper, is he going to take the lead as they pass Sessier de Vries there, he's down the inside as they come into the home straights, and Lee Fairhurst takes the lead of the Dave Leonard under 25 championship, Alex Wass down to second place. I must say a fabulous effort has been made by a huge list of sponsors for this event, too many to list here, over five and a half thousand pounds of sponsorship has been raised for this race this year. Let's thank uh, Lee Lawrence and all his other fundraisers for their efforts in memory of Dave Leonard, the organiser of this championship until his sad passing last year. Four laps to go now for Lee Fairhurst as Tristan Jackson rejoins after a tangle there, right in front of Danny Wayman. He tangled with Sierra de Vries in H54, who's racing one of Matt Newson's many cars. Good battle here in the midfield, and Ward Neal's in with the pumper in no uncertain terms on Jackson there. He's determined to try and get onto the podium, the man who won this event last year. Chasing now Danny Wayman in 2-1-2, but it's surely going to be a win for Lee Fairhurst in 2-1-7. The man from Bolton in Lancashire, two laps to go. It's clear of Alex Wass in 2-8-3. 2-1-7 car heading for perhaps a fitting victory. 2012 Brisker F1 world champion see his dad Derek out on track later on as well in a rather special race on our programme as Lee Fairhurst comes up to lap 69 Matt Barnard on his F1 debut he's on his last lap now Lee Fairhurst is going to win the Dave Leonard under 25 championship for 2017 comes off the final turn takes the chequered flag Fairhurst wins it was second Ashley England is third and a sort out for fourth on the run to the line and what Neil's just beat Danny Wayman home for fourth place Cracking race there at the under-25s. We lose a couple of cars on the final turn there. One of them is Hannah Chattel in 387 in the Tim Warren car. Congratulations, Lee Fairhurst in 217. Cuts loose in celebration. A brilliant and very fitting win. Struggled in last year's event in damp conditions. Takes the win in this year's under-25 championship. Leading home Alex Wass by just under a second. Ashley England third ahead of Antwort Neils and Danny Wayman. Good to see Kyle Gray, one of our newcomers up there in ninth place as well. A total of 21 cars out of the 30 that started went the distance, and it was Lee Fairhurst who got the fastest lap. 217, Lee Fairhurst, under 25 champion of 2017.
yeah, really happy with that. Obviously, really good race, and uh, yeah, I just want to say a big thanks to everyone who's donated, sponsored, and put money up for that. It really does help us young drivers get through and gives us the money to compete for next time we're out. So, a big thank you to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, there's some tremendous prize money in it, and obviously, yeah, uh, we've got to remember Dave Leonard who, who set all this going, and even more special to you. Yeah, obviously knew Dave very well, and I went on a few holidays with him to New Zealand and trips like that. So. Yeah, good memories with, with Dave and uh, yeah, I'm just really pleased to have won it uh, for Debs as well because she, she organises everything now and put everything as well, Lee as well who organises stuff so yeah just a big thanks to them too as well. And this was your last chance to win it as an under 25? Yeah, I'm oh, 26 now but I started the year at 25 but looks like I'm going to have to defend it next year at 27 so it is what it is, it? we'll give it a go next year as well. Well congratulations, well done. Cheers Richard, thank you. Time now for a very special race indeed. 73, Rob Cowley calls time on his 40-year career in Brisker F1 with a very special invitation race. There are 10 drivers out there on this grid. Rob, Rob has chosen the drivers who will be racing against him and Rob leads them off. Number 22, Will Yarrow behind him. 5-1-2, Michael Stewart. Number 37 is Chris Cowley, son of Rob, who was a last-minute surprise entry to race against his dad, in this event. Also out there we've got Paul Hines in 259. Treble 5, Frankie JJ. Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. 217 for this race is Derek Fairhurst, Lee's dad. Matt Newson is there, Danny Wayman and the British champion Frankie Wayman Jr. A 10 car grid, this is going to be a 10 lap dash. It celebrates the end of an incredible 40 year career for the hairdresser from Warwickshire, Rob Cowley, one of the great entertainers of Brisker Formula One on his retirement party here tonight. Here we go then, 10 laps, can he win his final special race? He leads them off down towards the first turn ahead of Will Yarrow in the 22. Michael Stewart's there on the inside in 5-1-2. We go on board with Paul Hines in 2-5-9, starting towards the back of the grid at the inside. Oh, Rob Cowley's gone wide, he's put himself in the wall at uh, turn three. What was that all about? Hines clobbers him and goes through up the inside into third place, it's Chris Cowley that's taken the lead, he now runs wide, Paul Hines going for the lead at the inside, Chris Cowley smoking the tyres, he runs wide coming off turn two, nearly gets clobbered there on the outside, so Hines leads it, Rob Cowley's got himself back up into second place, we ride with him, looking back as they come down the home straight, he's hit the wall again, coming down the home straight, he's broken our camera there, that'll be £300 please Rob, hopefully it's just the mounting that's come off there on the uh, onboard camera. He's continued on in the midfield. Matt Newson has now gone to the front in number 16 as Junior Wayman put sideways by the man of the moment, Rob Cowley. Derek Fairhurst in his son Lee's car, which we've already seen take a win in Lee's hands tonight, under fire from uh, Will Yarrow in the 22. Paul Hines has gone wide, he drops back in 259. Trouble five, Frankie JJ is at the back. It's Matt Newson who's got the lead in number 16. They're all taking very different lines. This is a lot like one of the uh, indoor exhibition races you see at the uh, Autosport show in January at the NEC. Now he's going for the lead. 37, Chris Cowley. It's the Cowley's 1-2 coming out of turn two. Back on board with Paul Hines in 2-5-9. Down towards turn three. They're all bottling up behind each other again. Hines to the inside, battling Michael Stewart in 5-1-2 in this Rob Cowley farewell race. Rob has gone back to the front of the pack by the look of it in 73. He's put himself in the wall twice, but uh, still able to fight back into the lead. Junior Wayman attacks number 16 of Matt Newsom. Behind them, Will Yarrow. Some of those balloons still hanging in there on Rob Cowley's car. Matt Newsom second. Junior Wayman is up into third place. This really is uh, an exhibition race, I would say. There's Junior Wayman going, he's gone wide, so has uh, Danny Wayman, so's Chris Cowley, he's all over the place, smoking the tyres, and Matt Newson is not finished yet, sticking the bumper in on Rob Cowley, our race leader, Garoff, says Rob, and keeps it going out in front, Paul Hines back up to third in 2.59, and Matt Newson attacks again, coming out of turn four, he retakes the lead down the home straight with, with uh, two laps to go, Paul Hines fighting away in there as well, Will Yarrow is fourth, well, plenty of entertain entertainment and overtaking in this race, to say the least. They're coming around to start the final lap. Now, can Rob Cowley win 
his farewell race. He has a look on the inside, coming down the home straight. Matt Newson has left a gap. Paul Hines is going to attack both of them into turn one. They're going to be three wide, going into the back straight for the final time. Hines takes the lead. Pound of smoke there at the back, but can Rob Cowley attack here in the final turn? He's under fire from Matt Newson. Paul Hines leads into the last bend. There's four of them together. Cowley at the inside, and he's got it. Rob Cowley takes the win. Matt Newson gives him a shove as they cross the line. That was brilliant. Well, he may have put himself in the wall twice and uh, possibly broken our onboard camera, but Rob Cowley still takes the win in his special farewell invitation race. Brilliant stuff. And the man who's been racing Brisker F1 for 40 years, one of the longest-serving drivers in stock car racing, takes the win in his uh, farewell event. Cowley, the winner ahead of Matt Newson and Paul Hines. Chris Cowley finishing sixth behind Will Yarrow and uh, Michael Stewart. All ten drivers in that one uh, did go the distance and it was Matt Newson who got the fastest lap. He did lead for quite a time in that race. Great fun there. Happy retirement, Rob Cowley. Now it's on to the uh, main part of the Gala Knights programme. A huge field of 33 cars out for heat number one of this event starting in graded order. A number of novices starting from the back in this one. Well, Gala Knight always sees a few newcomers to uh, Brisker F1 trying the sport out. We've got a couple of drivers' mechanics out there. We've got drivers returning to racing as well as uh, our newcomers. Leading the field away, number 544, Ben Howard. He's a mechanic for the Williams Formula One Grand Prix team. So from one type of F1 to another. There's 232, that's Bryn Tutel, ex Brisker F2 racer. So here we go then with uh, 16 laps for heat. Number one, 33 cars, big field out on track. There is two Tillymont Stuart Smith's cars under fire. It's Ben Howard and uh, Kelvin Hassell, number 13, who will lead the way into the first turn, along with Shane Geary in 478. Tootal getting caught up there with the 11 car of Neil Scriven. He's come to a dead stop in the middle of the turn. Hannah Chappell was spun there in the 387 car. Ian Clayton goes wide to avoid her. 257, Jason Griffin, Sesk's uh, Brisker F2 man in a tangle there. 232 car stuck dead in the uh, middle of turn one. We've got a tangle on the outside as well. Several uh, white tops have piled up there, so the caution flags come out. And there's Ashley England. He's hit Bryn Tootel's car. We've also lost Richard Davies in 325. 448 Jason Eaton and Ben Howard in 544. We'll try and see what's happened there. Bryn Tootel just came to a dead stop in the middle of the turn there, but the uh, real problem was further back as these white graders barreled their way into turn one. Richard Davies got oh he got a hit there and just piled straight into the side of Jason Eaton, taking Ben Howard with them as well as Ashley England hits Bryn Tootel's car. We'll see it from uh, turn two. Now there's Davies, he just got shoveled into that uh, pile of white tops there and walloped straight in they went. Meantime, Ashley England tried to climb over the front of Bryn Tootel's car. There's Davies, oh it was Ben Howard who gave him the shove. I think somebody just forgot to break going in there. No, it was a bit too quick for the eye to see who it was. So, number 13, Kelvin Hassan, it is who leads the way ahead of Mark Lamas in 243, brother of Drew Lamas, who regularly races that car. We get back underway, a few half spins in the pack, and more chaos down the home straight here. Cars bouncing off each other, and round goes Tristan Jackson in car 101, tangled with one of the red tops there. Didn't see who it was. Mark Lamas now gets spun around by 287 car, and that was of Sean Willis. Mark Lamas trying to recover in 243, the blue and white car. Luke Davidson has come through very quickly there, but the caution is out again for those two cars tangled up on the entry to turn one. Tristan Jackson is one of them. I think the other one is one of Will Hunter's cars. That might well be Dan McLaren, Will Hunter's mechanic. And there's the tangle. They were bouncing off each other all the way down the straight there. Kelvin Hassel leads ahead of Sean Willis, uh, Steve Malkin in 3.08, third. Luke Davidson already on lap four is up into fourth position from Red Top, incredible. So he'll start as the favourite for this one then on this restart. Kelvin Hassel in number 13, looking for his first. Brisker F1 win, leads the way ahead of Sean Willis, Steve Malkin, it's Davidson and Ashley England. Here we go with the restart then, Willis, the man from Lincolnshire, has a look at the inside and Steve Malkin nearly rode over the back of one of those cars. Well, they've all got wide as a result of that. Luke Davidson's going to burst through into the lead. 20th on the grid to the lead in four laps. That's unbelievable. Kelvin Hassel nearly tangling with Steve Whittle there in 183. What 
an unbelievable rise through the field there by Luke Davidson. And now he is surely going to clear off into the lead. Steve Malkin battling with 287 of Sean Willis. That's for third place. Back in the order there, he's 124 with the white roof there. That's Kyle Gray. He's a little way behind these two blue graders, Neil Scriven, number 11. And 322, local man from Birmingham, James Nietzsche. Kyle Gray attacking Nietzsche in 124. It's Kyle Gray's first ever Brisker F1 meeting. 71 of Kieran Leach being lapped by the leaders, brother of Aaron Leach, who we've seen win at Birmingham this year. 64 John Fortune there, the Scotsman. Shove in on Neil Scriven earlier on, trying to do the same again as uh, James Nietzsche said, should send Sean Willis out wide. There's Gray in 124, only 16 years of age. Started from the back in this one from Novice Gray, son of Mark Gray. Been racing that car this season. Mark's other car tonight being raced by Matt Barnard. John Fortune gets the bumper in again on Neil Scriven, and a bit of a tangle there down the home straight. Round goes Steve Malkin in the 308 car. 464, Luke Davidson leads Ashley England in 346. Davidson has done the fastest lap of the race. So, again, Neil Scriven under fire there from John Fortune. Determined to get past him, and now he does, but he has to divert towards the infield there as Ian Clayton was pulling off in 341. Kyle Gray under fire from Steve Whittle. Fortune in there as well. Mark Lamas and Short Willis. Terrific fight here in the midfield. We're in the second half of this race now. There is Kyle Gray, who's done extremely well to rise through from the back from Novice Gray, and Neil Scriven in trouble. He's dropping out in number 11. Fortune under fire now from Steve Whittle. That sends Mark Lamas out wide in 2 4 3. Luke Davidson driving away from everybody else in 4 6 4, the former European champion. And Kyle Gray on the inside, he's taken Whittle, he's taken Lamas in one move there. A superb drive from the back by newcomer Kyle Gray in his first ever. Brisker F1 meeting. He has been practicing here at Wheels on weeknights over the last few weeks. The wheels track open every Wednesday night for practice, but he was a bit wide there. Kyle Gray off turn four, loses a couple of spots that he gained. Uh, four laps to go, meanwhile, for Luke Davidson in 464. The man from the northwest in the ex Tom Harris car continues to lead the way. Comes up to lap Jay Hewitt in 546. That's the stricken car of Hannah Chappell, who spun out there in the background. In second place is Ashley England, but dropping back now. Looks like it's uh, James Nietzsche in third on his local raceway, number 322, also a former European champion. Here's Steve Whittle, who's dropped back a bit in 183. That's his Sean Willis, 287. These drivers looking to get through to the Gala Night Final, which carries the Dave Leonard Memorial Trophy to start their last lap very shortly then of this heat number one. Luke Davidson, one lap to go, took the lead as early as lap four, and he has dominated this heat one. Ashley England, the only man to keep to be able to keep pace with him. But it's the man from the northwest, 464, former European champion Luke Davidson takes the ex Tom Harris car to victory. A clear margin over Ashley England in second, continuing his good evening. Third will go to James Mitchell in 3 2 2. Confirm the rest of the results in just a moment. The rest of the pack across the line. Steve Whittle very sideways there off the last bend. It's Davidson who takes a clear victory in Brisker F1. Heats at number one of this end of season gala night under the Birmingham floodlights. Cracking racing so far. Davidson taking the win by just under two seconds ahead of Ashley England with James Nietzsche third and Kyle Gray from the back up into fourth place. A superb drive. Good to see a couple of uh, returnees in the top ten as well. John Thompson in 3-1-2 and John Engleston 5-20 in the top ten. 4-6-4 Luke Davidson. Heat 1-1 one here at Birmingham. Do you find it different having a lot of inexperienced drivers out with you tonight? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Um, first few laps there was cars everywhere, a bit of carnage, but... Uh... We got through that and uh, took the lead, pretty comfortable run, but um, yeah, we'll take it and on to the final now. Yeah, the car's getting quicker every time you drive it now, you must be getting a bit more used to it. Yeah, um, Tom's giving me a lift and uh, without him racing he's giving me more time, so the car's getting quicker every time, comfortable in it. Um, I think we're going to go ahead with this car for next year, so Tom's going to have a couple of new ones, we'll take this one off him. Yeah, it's been going well recently. It's nice when you say you'll just take it off Tom. Yeah, well, he's having two new ones, so we'll take this one. Well, best of luck for the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much. Right, then, I'll buy you
no idea who that was in the background there, but uh, good to see Luke and his son Alfie. 24 cars then for heat number two. Leading the field away for this one, number 180, Courtney Wicks, the former National Mini Stocks gold top and winner of many, many other titles. Her younger brother Jack is the current gold top in the National Minis at just 11 years of age. His family, a real racing family. Their dad, Ray, was a very successful Brisker F1 racer as well. There's Rob Cowley in 73, still got those balloons hanging in there. Starting behind Alex Wass, who we saw out earlier on the under-25s. Courtney Witts in 180 and 443, Richard Dickerson, saloon stock car racer, lead the field away. 24 cars out there in total. Brisker F1, heat number two, gets underway over 16 laps. Charles their way down towards the first turn. We go on board with Will Yarrow in car 22 as Sierra de Vries takes Rob Cowley out wide there. Yarrow able to make up a couple of places. The man from Northamptonshire in the number 22. Chasing after our lower graders, Russell Cooper ahead of him. We've got a spinner in there, 480 of Fraser Nairn has tangled with 283. Alex Wass is left facing the wrong way on the exit of turn four. There's Lee Fairhurst in 217, sharing the car with his father tonight. He's being chased by number 10, George McMillan Jr. Brisker F2 world champion in the Paul Hines car. We're on board with Rob Cowley, loses out to Lee Fairhurst there, nearly hits the stationary car of Fraser Nair. The yellow flags come out for him, and uh, just as the caution comes out, Fraser Nair gets it fired up and he's able to start to drive away. Let's see what happened there down on turn four. He tangled with Alex Wass in 283. Round went the 480 car. That's the end of Fraser Nair's heat at number two. Courtney Wicks then with the lead in 180 ahead of Paul Spooner in 104 as we get back underway. This leads them off then looking for her first Brisker F1 win. It's only her second Brisker F1 meeting and her first this year. On board with 367, Steve Shaw driving Mark Sargent's car tonight. Steve Shaw, an ex goal top in the Rebels formula, father of Lucy Shaw of National Mini Stocks fame. Now he gets through there. Nobody's managed to burst his balloons yet. This continues. Sam Makin in 93 gets sent wide there by Richard Dickerson. Just ahead of them is George McMillan Jr., number 10, for former Brisker F2 World and National Points Champion, driving the four lines. Campbell Meals there in 408 gets past Austin Moore. So as Lee Fairhurst in 217 also passes Will Yarrow in the 22. It's still Courtney Wintz up front ahead of Paul Spooner in 104. Returning to Brisker F1 tonight. Last raced a couple of years ago. He made blue top on his uh, previous appearances in Brisker F1. And from County Durham, he's second ahead of Steve Reedman in 361. Here comes Lee Fairhurst now behind the 408 of Antwort Neils. Last year's under 25 champion. Now races in British touring cars on the circuit with an Audi. Rob Cowley bashing with the bump on the back of Richard Dickerson. In one of Matt Newson's many higher cars. Again, the bumper goes in from Cowley. Up the inside of the 443 takes the place, passing the stranded car of Martin Spires, who's dropped out there on turn four. And a spin there. Sierra de Vries has tangled with Richard Woods in 268. They slide onto the infield. But it's still Courtney Wintz, who leads the way in the car that Rob Speak raced last season. Could she be on for her first ever Brisker F1 win? Such a smooth driving style Courtney has saw so many times in national mini stocks over the last few years i would love to see courtney race regularly in brisker f1 next year they're off turn four alex was chasing matt barnard in 69 in one of mark gray's cars matt making the move up from the v8 hot stocks the one off tonight courtney Witts has led every lap of this race so far coming up to lap tom boyer his first appearance of the season in 28 making behind them as well in number 93. There are four laps to go now. Courtney Witt isn't going to be caught here, I don't think. Paul Spooner going well, still there in second, ahead of Lee Fairhurst in 2-1-7, up into third. Then we've got Antwort Neils in 4-0-8. Quite a bit of smoke there. That's coming from one of those cars that's tangled up on the infield there. I think it's coming from Sierra de Vries. He's trying to disentangle his car from that of Richard Wood, smoking the tyres as he does so, and it's causing a bit of a Days of Thunder-style smoke screen. You can see it here on the home straight. That's going to cause a few problems to the drivers. Matt Barnard under fire from Alex Wass in 283. Behind them, Phoebe Wainman and Steve Shaw. Such a mix of different drivers here, as always on Garland. Part of the appeal, the variety in this event. 
Barnard gets through there. Alex Wasp will find back going into turn one. He sends Barnard out wide. They both go sideways and Barnard spins. Spins around there. Courtney Wits says hello to her former mini stocks rival as she goes through on her final lap now. And Courtney Wits, number 180, is holding up a clear lead over Lee Fairhurst and is heading for her first ever Brisker F1 win. A great drive by Courtney Wits. Fairhurst second the rest of the finishes shortly. A red flag out there because of Matt Barnard's stranded car on turn one. So he finished checkered and red flags. And Courtney Witts, congratulations to her. her. First ever Brisker F1 win in only her second meeting in the category. Her first this year. I really hope we see her race regularly with the F1s in 2018. Leading home Lee Fairhurst by 1.6 seconds with Ant Wart Neal's third ahead of returnee Paul Spooner. Frankie JJ taking fifth. Good to see George McMillan and Richard Dickerson in the top ten as well. Lee Fairhurst, meanwhile, got the fastest lap. 1-8-0, Courtney Waits. Uh, heat two winner here tonight. First ever race win. Yeah, that's it. First one. Second meeting. Um, I did Gala Night last year and then uh, Gala Night again this year. And that's my first win and I'm chuffed. <laughs> So does this mean you'll be in Formula 1 full-time next season? One can only dream. Um, I would love to be, but like I've got a lot going on and obviously I'm still at college, like full-time education, and it's a big commitment to do, like, as much as I'd love it, and I think all of like the family would love it as well, but like, I mean, I'd, I, I would want to, and like, we'll see where we're at next year, I mean, see if there's anything available for me to race, but like, I don't like spectating, I've done it for a year and it's no good. <laughs> Yeah, you were very successful in the mini stocks as well. It looks like you're going to carry that on in the Formula 1s. I should hope so. I mean, I'm trying my best to do the same again in this final now. But um, hopefully, like, it's not just a one-night thing. I hope that, like, I can make a career of it one day. Um, and hopefully it looks as, as successful as my mini one did by the time I retired. Well, best of luck for the final. We'll keep an eye on for you next year as well. Thank you very much. Some brilliant action so far under the Birmingham floodlights with plenty of hard hits and plenty of uh, rather unexpected success for some drivers. Some drivers still with some repairs to do ahead of the consolation and finals coming up. That's coming up after a short break here on Premier Sports. Hope you've enjoyed the action so far. Join us after the break for more stock car racing. Welcome back to Birmingham Wheels Raceway on the season-ending Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Gala Night for 2017. Some great racing seen so far from the big, big entry of Brisker Formula One's a champion crown with Lee Fairhurst taking the under-25s championship as well. Now it's time for the consolation race for the drivers who didn't get into the meeting final through the two qualifying heats tonight. The rest of these drivers looking to get through to the Gala night final. 26 cars out on track in total for this one. Higher graders from towards the back. The novices starting behind them. Still a few novices out there. There's 2 1 2. Danny Wayman could be in with a chance in this one. Also, the uh, few novices there, including Hannah Chappell in 387. Danny Wayman, I think the only red top out in this one. The red roof car owned by Will Hunter there at the back is being driven by his mechanic Andrew Lomas in 255. Here we go then, ready for action. A 16 lap race, plenty of whites and yellows out there, and it's 308 Steve Malkin who leads them away. Numbers going in there, Steve Shaw on his return to racing, attacking the 172 of Mickey Randall. Dan McLaren in Will Hunter's other car runs out wide there on turn two. 13 Kelvin Hassel on the attack. Oh no, he goes on to the centre. Like he was going to go up the inside there, but he's picked up a problem. And off he goes onto the infield. Ian Clayton running wide in. 341. 186 Todd Jones coming through. He goes well here at Birmingham. This car lent to Harry Stewart earlier on for the under 25s race after Harry's engine let go in practice. Should shove there down the home straight on board with Steve Shaw in the Mark Sargent car number 367. It's pushed wide there by Neil Scriven. He and Todd Jones both go through. Shaw loses a couple of spots. He's lost another one to Danny Wayman. 212 displaying the name of Dave Leonard on the rear panel of his car, and there's a bit of a tangle down the home straight. That is uh, Richard Woods, 257 Jason Griffiths. He's got a puncture as a result of that. Fraser Nang gets caught up there with, I think, that's Ben Howard in 544. 308 Steve Malkin Jr. continues to lead the way. In fact, it's H54 Sied de Vries who's tangled there with Fraser Nang on turn two. Steve Moore in 127 attack from 232. Bryn Tutel 
former Brisker F2 racer. Racing on the circuit in single-seaters in the last few years, attacking a whole bunch of cars ahead of him there, and that's allowed Todd Jones in 186 to slip past all of them. Neil Scriven on the attack, bumpers two tell wide, under fire in turn from Danny Colliver in 4.68. But coming up behind them now is Danny Wayman, a car bouncing off the home straight wall there, Jason Eaton in 4.48. It's Malkin who leads from Mickey Randall, number 172 in second, and Todd Jones is now up into third. This is the fight for fourth place as we come up towards half distance. Danny Wayman gets through as they cross the line. Started 21st on the grid, now up into fourth. He'll chase after the three race leaders here. Todd Jones currently holding third place. Neil Scriven fighting with Danny Colliver for fifth. Behind them, Austin Bohr in 127. It's still 3.08. Steve Malkin Jr. who leads the way. Four four eight. Jason Eaton has come to a stop there on turn two. Brin Tootel continues on though, racing with Matt Barnard, the man from Staffordshire in 69. 27, Jason Griffiths on the infield in the background as Neil Scriven uh, tangles up with Colliver there. They're fighting for fourth and fifth place, and Colliver now spins around, gets tagged by the 387 of Hannah Chappell. Colliver reverses out of the way from uh, near London. It's Malkin who leads, but here comes Mickey Randall up the inside, fires him into the back marker, and uh, Randall's gone. And he tried an attack for the lead there, but spun himself out. Mickey Randall in 172. Had a frustrating season this year. So your lead car is still Malkin in 308. Looking to get through to the Gala final. It's Todd Jones second. Danny Wayman is in third. Lap boards are out. Less than five to go now. Here's Matt Barnard attacking the 28 car of Tom Boyer. Behind them, Richard Woods in 268. We saw him in trouble early on. Malkin in 3.08, continuing to lead the way. Are we going to have a white grade win, or is Todd Jones going to have something to say about that? Racing his brother Murray's car here tonight. Three laps to run. Rejoining there, Dan McLaren in 2.56 in Will Hunter's car. The leaders uh, just about getting round the outside there. Danny Wayman, though, could get in for an attack here. Jones being slowed up very slightly as a result of that. Yes, the three leaders almost together now with just a couple of laps left to run. Is it going to be a win for Malkin? Will it be Jones? Will it be Wayman? Around turns one and two they come. Jones charging up the inside there into turn three, and he takes the lead. Malkin fights back, though, tries to get the bumper in as they come into the final lap. Todd Jones and Steve Malkin side by side. The back marker in the way, and Jones has tackled up with it, and wallop straight in, goes 5-2-9. The back marker there, that's Mark Osborne in one of Mark Sargent's cars. So it's Danny Wayman that's taken the lead, and he's coming round to take the chequered flag this time. Wayman able to get through there to take the uh, chequered flag. In fact, he's greeted with a yellow flag as he crosses the line. Now, does that mean end of race? The yellow's called for Mark Osborne in 529. We'll see what happened there. He got caught up with Todd Jones. In they went. That was at the start of the last lap of the race. Now, Danny Wayman crossed the line. But it looks like we are going to go for a one-lap restart. Unusual. But we are going to have a one-lap sprint for the line. Danny Wayman, the leader. Now, Todd Jones has been able to rejoin behind Steve Malkin. Danny Colliver's a backmarker. Looks like he's got a tyre going down, in fact, on the outside there. So Malkin under fire from Jones, but Wayman's been able to get away. As a result of that, Colliver pulls to one side. Well, in fact, he hits the wall. He pulls so far to one side. Neil Scriven in there as well in number 11. There goes the tyre on Danny Colliver's car. And Danny Wayman's been able to get away ahead of Steve Malkin. Jones lunges in with the bumper on the last bend. Wallop straight in goes Malkin. And Danny Wayman takes the win. So a rather strange finish there to our consolation. That was uh, rather unfortunate for Steve Malkin Jr. there. He got fired in on the last bend when he had uh, second place all but sewn up before that yellow flag came out. But Danny Wayman able to hold on to take his win started as the pre-race favourite in that consolation event. He takes the spoils in the consolation, goes through to the Gala Night Final ahead of Todd Jones, Neil Scriven, Bryn Tutel a good fourth. Steve Malkin Jr. has to settle for fifth position. Good to see newcomer Terry Hawkins making the move up from V8 Hot Stocks in the top ten as well. Fifteen cars went the distance in that one, and it was Todd Jones who got the fastest lap. 2-1-2, two two, Daniel Wehrman, consolation winner. You've left it late in the season to get an interview. Yeah, he keep, seems to keep shy of me, so it's all right, I think. Yeah, you had a bit of an incident in the heat, you headbutted the centre green, what was that all about? The gearbox went and it lost drive and it just, the car speeds up and 
I just went, I turned left because I didn't want to be in the middle of the track and then it didn't want to stop. So I used it as a cushion, but it still was solid. <laughs> so now you've got it on song again in that one, you'll be going out for the final win now. To be honest, see, there's that many newcomers out there, it, you, you're not driving as normally you would. It, I, I kept backing off a bit and letting people just get back into shape and stuff and finals should be better than they might not have qualified and but yeah we'll see. Yeah the gala night certainly has made it a lot more interesting in the racing like you said there's basically people all over the place. Yeah there is yeah there's a, a big thing for people like people, mechanics mainly now because they're into mechanics race, race their cars and I've let my out a couple of times to mechanics and they've ended up getting cars themselves and which that's good if the gala night does that so we'll see how many come across for next year. Yeah, and uh, good luck for the final. Yeah, thank you. Now time for a special event for the Brisker Formula 2 stock cars. This is a dash for cash. 18 cars out there, three abreast. It's a clutch start when the green flag goes down. And the driver's not even waiting for the red flag to go up, never mind the green. They've taken it upon themselves to start the race. Well, the red lights are still on around the raceway. They're all over the place on the first turn and surely that's going to be an aborted start. Off goes Paul Bailey in 297 onto the centre. The red flags are out, but the drivers don't seem to be taking any notice of them. Oh, a special end of season dash for cash for the uh, Formula 2s. Starts with complete mayhem, and we'll uh, line them up to try again. We've lost three cars from the 18-car grid as a result of that. Paul Bailey is one of them. Away we go then, 15 cars, they wait for the green flag this time, they get underway, over the rumble strip there goes Chevy Mills, I think that was in 5.38, he tries to take the lead as a result of that, they all scatter, Steve Smith in 2.99 has tangled with somebody, that was um, 8.28 of Julian Coombe, now who's come out with the lead, it's Matt Stoneman in 1.27. Well, we've had uh, events like that before with the three abreast clutch stars, and they've ended up with virtually everybody else of the race on the first turn, thankfully this one didn't end up like that, Stuart Hodson getting set wide there, 25 but that was a bizarre first attempt at getting that uh, three abreast clutch start underway because the drivers didn't even wait for the starter to get the flag rev so one two seven matt stoneman the man from devon leads the way there he is in two turns three and four his car's all over the place already second place is 581 that's dan fallows also in there we've got luke wrench in 560 who won the gala championship earlier on in this meeting for the second year in a row in fact, it's James Riggle, 527 in second place. I apologise, there he is, slapping one of the back markers. That's uh, 338 Warren Broxot being lapped. There's the battle further back for third place. It's Matt Stoneman, a Birmingham specialist, as are many of the West Country based F2 drivers out in front. There's Luke Wrench, 560, battling with 581 of Dan Fallows. Matt Stoneman, uh, not surprisingly, with the fastest lap of the race. Devon-based electrician leads the way. It's 10-lap dash for the cash. £500 prize to the race winner. Wrench ahead of Dan Fallows, specialist in winning Grand Nationals over the years, hence his nickname, the Red Rum. Back in the order, the likes of Ben Lockwood in 618 there, Stuart Hodson, Skegness in 25. And the lap boards are out. It looks like it is going to be Matt Stone, but took the lead on the first lap towards the back of the uh, closed-up 15-car grid. Perhaps all the uh, Grand Nationals or all-comers races should be run with the closed grid clutch start, who knows. Coming towards the final lap now of the uh, Brisker F2 2017 season. No points on tonight's meeting for any of the formulas, of course, this end-of-season special gala night. It's going to be a win for Matt Stoneman in 1-2-7. Round the final turn, he takes the £500 prize in the end of season dash for cash. James Riggle second, Luke Wrench takes third ahead of Dan Fallows and the rest of them. We may not have got off to a very auspicious start, but they behave themselves in the second try. Matt Stoneman takes the win. The red flags come out to end the F2 season for 2017. Matt Stoneman taking the win by nearly two seconds ahead of James Riggle. Luke Wrench third ahead of Dan Fallows. And Ben Lockwood, good to see newcomer Jordan Thackra in eighth place, making the move up from Stocks Carts. Twelve cars went the distance in that Dash for Cash event, and it was race winner Matt Stoneman who got the fastest lap. Time for the Gala Knights final for the F1s then. This is the Dave Leonard Memorial Trophy. 
memory of the long-time sponsor, XF2 racer, and the original organiser of the FIFA Dirt 25 Championship. This one's for you, Dave. Kyle Gray and Courtney Winks are two star newcomers off the front of the grid. Courtney a winner earlier on. Kyle Gray last to fourth. If he started that heat from the front, could he have won it? On board with Rob Cowley in 73, what will definitely be his last ever Brisker F1 race. Stock car drivers never really retire, though. They just get quicker. Here we go, then, with the 20 lap Gala Knights Dave Leonard Memorial Final. Away they go, then, already the Blue Raiders getting to grips with each other there. John Fortune heads the yellows in 164, bring two tail attacks. Ashley England in 346, and two tails come to a stop again in the middle of turn two. He gets a shunt in assistance from a couple of the blue tops. It's Courtney Wits who leads a tangle there coming off turn four. One of those cars is uh, Paul Spooner. I think Mark Lamas is the other one. They've gone into the bank on the inside of turn four. This continues on though. Woods McMillan in there in number 10. The Scottish uh, F2 start, a tangle there on the outside of Turn 4, Austin Moore and Sean Willis go off, somebody else in there as well, I think that was Phoebe Wayman in 2-1-1, James Neitchell bumpers Rob Cowley out wide. Still those balloons hanging in there on the 73 car, he attacks Ashley England, takes him out wide, oh they've tangled up and slide out towards the pit gates. It's ruined Rob's chances of a victory in his last ever race, we've got two cars stuck together in the middle of Turn 1, Sean Willis and Phoebe Wayman. Car of uh, Will Yarrow avoids them there, so does Brick Tootle in 2 3 2. Here's the battle for the lead. Kyle Gray and Courtney Witts, they just missed the tangled cars there on turn one. It's Gray who's got the lead ahead of Witts, and now Richard Dickerson has crashed into that pile up at turn one. The yellow flags are out. We are under caution. That's a handy place to park for Sean Willis, almost on top of the 2 1 1 car. That's for Phoebe Wayman. There's something about that bit of the track, isn't there? That's the second time she's crashed out there tonight, and in the previous meeting, at uh, Birmingham, we saw her hit the wall on turn two as well. Must be a magnet in that uh, piece of armco. Getting ready for the restart then with Kyle Gray and Courtney Wins up front. What a story it would be if these two were to finish first and second. Just one Brisker F1 meeting between them before tonight. Courtney raced at Gala night last year. 283 Alex Wass is in third as we get back underway. Then it's Mickey Randall and Danny Oliver. Fairhurst under fire in 2-1-7, he gets pushed out wide, in fact I think Fairhurst has slowed up there, we're on board with Will Yarrow, yes, Lee Fairhurst has pulled up on the outside of turn two, he's out of the race. Will Yarrow attacks George McMillan, driving the Paul Hines Cup, let's get up the inside, meantime here's Ant Ward Neils battling earlier winner Luke Davidson, typically lively gala night final, 30 cars on track at the start of this one, Steve Whittle fires Alex Wasser, why they still Kyle Gray in 1-2-4. When was the last time a driver on his debut in the Formula won the final? Harry Stewart earlier this season won the UK Open title in only his second meeting in Bristol. He's had experience in senior formulas in hot rods. Kyle Gray straight out of national mini stops at the end of this season. Some the car there on turn two, that's Richard Dickerson in 4-4-3. Here's a battle between Walt Neils, John Fortune. And Steve Whittle, here come the leaders. Coming up towards halfway now, and Mickey Randall has moved through into second place ahead of Courtney Wins. Then Neil Scriven is fourth, Wass fifth, Danny Waitman sixth. This is the battle of the seventh. Matt Ward Neil's John Fortune, and the rest of them. Kyle Gray driving like he's been racing this car for ten years. Stunning drive so far. Could he pull off on the shocks of the season and win the Gala Night final for the Dave Leonard Memorial Trophy? Could Courtney Witts catch him? Half distance flag is out. Gray from Brandon. Witts third. In full clear of the rest of the field. Turns three and four, they're starting to come into back marker traffic now. Number 520 ahead of them there. That's John Englestone, ex saloon stock car driver, making a return to action tonight. Oh, Gray's going to try and deal with the back markers here. He Tries to get the bump print on Ingleston down the back straight. Oh, he's fired him into the bank. Ingleston's going to come back across. He hits the 1 2 4 car. Courtney Witts is going to get on the inside to take the lead. She's gone from third to first. Cuts across the outside. Oh, they've tangled up. Oh, no. The two newcomers have tangled and Gray right on top of the 180 car. Oh, that is such a shame. The shock results. Any hope of that is extinguished. The yellow flags are out. And Gray and Witts are going to be both out of the race. What a disappointment there for the two newcomers. All hope of a fairy tale result is gone. 
They just tangled up there on the outside. Wits went across the front of Gray. Gray right on top of Wits. They were lucky to uh, escape there. They're both out of the race, but it's Mickey Randall who's got the lead, ready for the restart of this Dave Leonard Memorial Final. Neil Scriven is up into second place. Danny Wayman in 2-1-2 is third. Away they go. And Walt Neils has got a puncture there. He's pulling up on the outside. We're on board with George McMillan in number 10 in the Paul Hines car. But he'll be making the switch to F1 next year. He gets spun aside on uh, turn two there. Didn't see who by. Danny Wayman attacking Neil Scriven now for second place. But Mickey Randall in 172 starting to get away. Danny Wayman with the bump from Neil Scriven moves through into second place. Three wide further back in the pack. Scriven fights back. But Mickey Randall out in front. He won the very first race of 2017 in March at the Wimbledon farewell meeting. Can he win the last race as well? 183 Steve Whittle attacking Alex Wass further back. That's for fifth position. It's Luke Davidson in fourth. There's Ashley England seventh ahead of John Fortune with the arrow. Rob Cowley rounding out the top ten. It's once chasing Steve Whittle. It's the battle for fifth position. It's Mickey Randall who leads with four laps to go. I know uh, members of Mickey Randall's team are very close friends of Dave Leonard, so this will be a very fitting victory if Mickey was able to hang on. Is it going to be first and last for Mickey Randall? He won the first race of the year at Wimbledon. Hasn't had the best of seasons in between, he's admitted that himself. But he's ahead of Danny Wayman. Danny Wayman's car, of course, carrying the sponsorship of Dave Leonard. It's going to be quite an emotional occasion if either of these two wins. Two laps to go. Brisker F1 season 2017. Actually, perhaps he'll bring up for an attack in the Wayman car. We've seen Junior Wayman in the Rob Cowley farewell race tonight. Into the last lap we go then. Mickey Randall comes up to lap Tom Boyer in 28. It's going to be a win for the yellow grader, I think. I don't think Danny Wayman's going to catch him. Here they come into the final turn of the season. And the Dave Leonard Memorial Trophy is won by Mickey Randall in 172. He wins the first race of the year at Wimbledon. He wins the last race of the year at Birmingham. Danny Wayman second. The rest of them come home behind. Checkered flag waves on Brisker F1 year 2017. And now I'm sure the drivers will start to cut loose in celebration, smoking those tyres. Neil Scriven spins in the background. He finished third in number 11. Danny Waitman burns out. So does Luke Davidson. So does Steve Whittle. Rob Cowley brings his career to a final close. Thanks for the memories, Rob. Enjoy your retirement. 40 years a stock car driver. Well done to everyone here on Gala Night tonight. Mickey Randall wins the Dave Leonard Memorial by just under 1.1 seconds ahead of Danny Wayman with Neil Scriven third ahead of Luke Davidson and Ashley England. Rob Cowley rounds out his career with a 10th place. 16 cars went the distance in that last race of the season and it was the unlucky Kyle Gray who got the fastest lap. 172, Mickey Randall, winner of the first race of 2017. Now you've just won the last race of 2017. Yeah, let's uh, let's hope we have a good start to next year and uh, do what we did at the start of this same. And uh, I could do with a few more of them because since the start of the year I've not seen much of it. So uh, hopefully for a good season next year. It's always nice to round the season out with a win. It gives you confidence for next year. You've just won the Dave Leonard Memorial Trophy as well in the final. It's a cracking trophy. Yeah, well we needed a bit of a lifter after the season we've had it's been pretty abysmal to be fair so yeah it's a definite lift and uh, we plan on building a new one I don't know if we'll be ready for next year but we'll do our best yeah the hard work doesn't stop after the last race of the season it only just begins really no, no that's, that's true um, yeah we'll just see how we get on hopefully it'll be done and uh, it'll be out well I don't know should I get rid of it now I don't know <laughs> well best of luck and we'll see you when you get back out thank you Heading into the 2018 season then, let's have a look at the world qualifying points so far. Stuart Smith with a clear lead over Nigel Green, neither of those two racing tonight though. Then it's the Waynemans and Lee Fairhurst ahead of Matt Newsom. A great season ahead in 2018, world qualifying already well underway for the 2018 World Final, which will take place at Skegness in next autumn. 
That's all then for 2017 in Brisker Formula One Stock Cars. We would like to extend our thanks to all the drivers for their entertainment this year. A thank you to all the marshals, medics and other track officials at the various raceways around the country. We could not go racing without them, so thank you to each and every one of you. Most of all, thank you to you, the viewers. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage this year. And until next time, this is Dave Goddard signing off for 2017 here on Premier Sports. Thanks for watching and goodbye.